What's up guys and welcome to the first episode of Nomadic Mining episode one. So in this episode we're going to be kind of setting up the precedence for this series and I think this is going to be a really good series um, and this is kind of an offshoot or a spinoff I guess you could say but this one's going to be a little different than kind of what I've done in the past. We're sitting here in the prospect and we're just going to be mining. Um, the goal of this series is to move around quite a bit and really the major over um, line goal is going to be doing and mining in as many systems as we possibly can probably try to cover like one system per episode uh but kind of the the guideline there is to mine at least one cycle in a system and then uh see how many systems we can cover and just kind of keep going you know and another benefit of this is this what's going to kind of differ this episode or these episodes from like solo mining would be we're going to be working a little bit more transparent here so um you'll be able to see the location that I'm mining in, you'll be able to see local, we'll be able to, uh, I'll be able to kind of like walk you through what kind of my process and what kind of goes through uh, my head when I'm kind of out there mining. So we're gonna kind of experiment as we kind of go here. But right now we, and I <laughs> don't expect me to like try to pronounce most of these systems in EVE um, because I'm not gonna try to butcher it. But I've modified my overview here so that we can see we can see D-scan, we can see local. Now, since we're actually trying to mine in as many systems as possible, um, I'm gonna be breaking a lot of my own rules when it comes to mining. So for instance, this system has about 26 people in local, including myself. Normally I wouldn't actually mine in a system this populated or like this high traffic, but uh, we are trying to mine everywhere. We're trying to just keep traveling and kind of living the nomadic life. We're also gonna be kind of tracking wallet in here as well. So income as we kind of go through this kind of expedition. So right now we're starting off at zero isk. A lot of this income expense right here that you see is 10 bill. I injected this character basically to, you know, kind of be ready to do a lot of mining. So a lot of the injections were going towards getting into the expeditionary frigates. Now, I don't know if we're gonna be, you know, strictly in the prospect or just expeditionary frigates for the uh, entirety of the series. I think that I would like to eventually put her into a skiff because we're not gonna be doing a whole lot of like, you know, gate, you know, a lot of traveling to get from one point to another. Um, for the most part, we're gonna be basically making one jump mining, making one jump mining. So I think a skiff would actually work out really well here. She still needs um, quite a few skills in order to kind of get the skip up and running. Mining March 4, Exhumers 4 is kind of where she's at right now. We got a little bit of Magic 14 to finish, which you can see right here. This is the Magic 14 track. So that's what she has to finish for that. And then also um, the mining, I'm probably gonna take mining drones with the skip as well. So mining drones and just getting drone skills and stuff. You guys, right now we're in a pretty high security. So we don't have to worry about uh, rats right now when we start getting into lower lower high sec then we'll be messing around with rats and stuff and if we decide to like also mine in low sec poshman null sec uh, where expeditionary frigates like a prospect or something would do really well or even like a procure then we'll have those skills available but i figure starting this series off with the prospect is really great i love this ship it allows us to move around quite a bit um with the covert cloak and everything so that's why I got going here. Let's go and talk about the fit just so we can kind of get a lot of this uh, exposition out of the way because most of this uh, is not going to change for, for the next, for the you know first few episodes at least. Now this fit is primarily focused on yield because well I'm going to be aiming for about spending about eight minutes or so in a system mining. We probably won't fill up the prospect every time. We want to kind of keep moving. We want to try to you know get to as many high sec systems in the shortest amount of time. So um, this is kind of like my new goal, which I think will be really interesting. This fit, we're gonna be using modulated deep core strip miners. And that's the reason we're doing that is because that allows us to use um, the mining crystals. So we're gonna be using type B2s for lower cycle time. Um, we're looking at about 10.3 cubic meters a second. So 20.6 and we're not running any real tank. Uh, I got a survey scanner on here just because, you know, it's very, very low resource. And it just gives me another you know thing to kind of mess around with afterburner uh m1 one mn afterburner two here I mean, we're loading the lows just completely full of 
uh, mining lasers and to make this possible we've got to use processor overclocks and then we're just carrying 15 uh, lasers there the other goal too is to like get the other type of um, crystals kind of trained up as well so when we do move into systems like 0.5s that have rare ore sites and we can kind of hit those as well um, we're not worried about saving anything necessarily for manufacturing we're going to sell everything um, so selling the ore is not going to be as efficient as I normally would do because we're essentially going to be trying to offload the ore um, locally to any buy orders we can just to keep our mining hold empty and kind of keep um, income kind of happening here so keep that in mind we got about two minutes I'm probably going to go for about another two minutes on this mining which is pretty good and then uh, then we'll just kind of keep going I really wanted to kind of like this episode I really wanted to kind of get the overall scope um, explained to you guys for what we're going to be doing here when we get to episode two and things um, I'll be able to talk a lot more about kind of what, what I'm looking at on screen. To give you a good idea, like I'm just watching local. I'm looking for any unusual spikes. Um, spikes in this system happen quite frequently because we are one jump from Jita. So a lot of through traffic coming through here. So in systems like this, the uh, D scan is your best friend here. We also want to make sure we're checking agency for pirate strongholds, which I have pinned down here. If it's grayed out, that means it's nowhere in our vicinity. And um, also, I just had like two jumps. Uh, we're going to be looking at, you know, kind of going around in like kind of a spiral from our starting point. Our starting point is essentially Jita. There's no asteroid belt in Jita, so we can't really mine there. But it's kind of how we're going here. But we're going to go probably this cycle. And then we're going to go ahead and try to sell. Let's look at, um, go to utilities here. We'll go to structure browser. What I'm looking at here is just a solar system. We're looking for structures that have a market that way we can actually sell um to remote buy orders and stuff so i think we're gonna hit up this one as soon as the cycle's over to try to complete this system and check it off our list uh 854,000 isk on that so we'll see the buy order we're, we, we're gonna try to be a little picky with buy orders we're not gonna try to sell to like anything that's ridiculously low here so just kind of like keep stuff moving it's gonna bring up our wallet the main like I said the main goal here is going to be trying to get or try to mine in as many systems in New Eden as possible let's go and jump in here we're a little over our time limit we could sell to a Jita market order here as you can see in green so we can go ahead and hit sell go immediate we get about nine nine hundred forty off of that episode one complete episode two we'll be heading to the next system and you know keep on doing the same thing and living that nomadic lifestyle